the 2022 World Cup is finally upon us and there's been a lot of questions about it being a mid-season World Cup, human rights violations. But the main topic of discussion today is that Lionel Messi is going to win the World Cup this time around. This is going to be his crowning moment. And why do you believe that this is going to be Messi's crowning moment just because he's back in form? Just look at the way he has been playing in, for Paris Saint-Germain. That man has been in absolute sensational form of late. He is back to his best. After a year in wilderness, personally I felt that maybe he has lost his motivation. Maybe he doesn't want to be that player again. But boy, he has proven me wrong. He has been absolutely outstanding. Seven Man of the Match awards in 12 league games this season. He has been exceptional in the Champions League. This, this is a guy who is totally motivated for the World Cup and he's gunning for the Ballon d'Or once again. Okay, he's gunning for the Ballon d'Or. Absolutely. Those are bold statements to make. Uh, but last time I remember Messi was the best player in, in an Argentina squad at the World Cup. He went on to the final. He won the gold, golden ball if I'm not wrong. Correct. Messi did, did it all. Absolutely. But he could not still win the World Cup. So. Yeah, that has a lot to do with the teammates he was playing. So, Argentina had a disrupted squad at the time. They were lacking in team chemistry. They were, they were managerial So issues. basically you are claiming that this time around the team is different. So Absolutely. They have managed to iron out those issues over the years. Scaloni has put together a settled squad. They, they have been playing with each other for a while now. Yeah. They know each other's game. They are in perfect sync. They showed that in the Copa America, they showed that against Italy in the Conmebol UEFA Cup of Champions as well. So this Argentina is very different to the Argentina from the previous World Cups. So I believe Messi has the support he finally needs. And like you have been talking about this big advantage that they have. Like I think they, they deserve hundred percent advantage is and what kind of impact it will have. 100%. So this year the World Cup is being played in Qatar. The South American teams have players who are who have grown up in tropical climates. They are used to playing in those conditions. So I think that gives them a huge advantage over their European counterparts. And let me be like a bit more descriptive about this. The advantage will be that uh, the heat will like wear out on the players. The player will feel the effect of the heat. Hundred percent. And eventually, when the game is towards its climax, that is where these the you can say South American players will have. A bit more energy, a bit more, you can say, uh, climatic. Uh, what word what, 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 what should I use to describe this? Like, they'll be better suited to that condition. In the Hundred percent. Absolutely. To go on and do it. Correct. Okay. So this is what you feel that their squad has changed. They have a settled squad. The chemistry is better. Messi's resurgence and the tropical climate as well. But what about the European teams? Because they are serious challenges. Absolutely, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't discount any European team, but let me just lay down the facts of the big five actually: England, Germany, France, Spain, and Portugal. These are the ones who are more likely to challenge the South American giant as compared to the other teams. So when it comes to France, they have lost their midfield engine, yeah. and Nolo Kante is out, Paul Pogba is out. That is a huge blow for them. Basically, you can say the engine is out, the team is out. Correct. The car won't run. Correct. When it comes to England. Gareth Southgate has shipped the bed in recent months. England have not been on top form. Most of their players are suffering. They have had injury issues like Reese James. I don't know. He's, he might not make it to the World Cup. Ben Chilwell, he might not make it to the World Cup. Trent Alexander-Arnold has not been in good form. Raheem Sterling has not been in good form. The midfield is not firing. The likes of Jordan Henderson, they're not starting regularly at club level. I don't expect them to start regularly for England. So that's England done. When it comes to Spain, they are lacking in experience when it comes to the midfield. I have no idea why Thiago Alcantara has been overlooked, especially when he is the best central midfielder Spain have right now. Gavi and Pedri, they are exceptional players, but they are not prepared for the World Cup stage right now. They haven't experienced that in the past and I don't see them rising to the occasion in Qatar. And the pressure but, certainly takes a Yeah, Yeah, it, it will get to them eventually. And... Then there's Portugal who have a very good squad again. This might be Cristiano Ronaldo's last opportunity to win the World it Cup. It is. It is his last opportunity. Yeah, it is, sure. it is. It is his last opportunity to win the World Cup. And Portugal have a very good squad, but their problem, in my opinion, is their defense. It has been quite poor in recent weeks or months. João Cancelo, he has not been at his best. He has been quite error prone for Manchester City. Ruben Diaz, he was outstanding in his first season in the Premier League. 
since then it has gone downhill for him is fernando santos the right uh, the right man to lead portugal correct i have my doubts regarding him as well i don't i don't think he has the tactical acumen to match up to his managerial Other counterparts yeah. so yeah i I'd, i'd leave portugal at that i think they have the potential to get to the quarter finals and stuff but i don't see them going all the way and that leaves us with germany Germany, another talented nation. They have always been the powerhouses when it comes to World Cup. Like, I heard this rumor that uh, the German manager uh, wanted Hansi Flick is the manager. Correct. Uh, he wanted Toni Kroos uh, in the squad. He he even tried to convince Kroos. Is it a real story? Yes, it is actually. The, I think he wanted more experience and quality in the midfield, which unfortunately is not going to be the case because I don't think Kroos is coming back. And Germany again, they are a very talented nation. They have loads of outstanding players at their disposal, but again, you, they are lacking you, experience. What would you say about the front three that Germany has? Because neither of them is in form. Neither of them correct the club level starts regularly. Correct, like Muller does, but Muller is not actually a out and out front three. Or you can say out and out. Yeah, but out. Thomas Muller has an exceptional record in the World Cup. He's one of the best performers in the World Cup. Yeah, I remember o- that over too. a long, long period of time. So obviously, he starts in the front three, yeah. and then there's Kai Havertz, who has not been at his best. At Chelsea, I'd say that he hasn't been able to find his natural position at Stamford Bridge. But anyway, he has not been at his best. And then there is Timo Werner, who flopped badly at Chelsea and had to return to RB Leipzig. Is Sane uh, injured or he, is he available? No, Sane is uh, available. And so there might be a situation where Sane plays on the left, Timo in the center. Actually, if right. if I was the manager, and if I was playing the squad, I'd have Sane and Gnabry both ahead of Havertz and Timo Werner. So Germany have a lot of disruptions. They have the lack of a lot of questions are yet to be answered, and as a result, Germany is not the team. Is not in my running to win the World Cup. We are left with Brazil and Argentina. Correct. What is the difference between the two? Like because both have the advantage of uh, having uh, played in tropical conditions. Because hundred percent is the kind hundred percent the climatic advantage applies to both Brazil and Argentina and any other South American team in the tournament. But the main reason I'm keeping Argentina. one step ahead of brazil is because brazil are yet to determine their first choice 11 they have had a lot of chopping and changing in recent months they haven't figured figured out their best team yet and on the other hand argentina are a side who are in absolute sink right now these and let's be honest they have a playing 11 that every kid in the block can remember because it is the same every time 100% the same the, like i just like Uh, let them know what the eleven is because we are already sure about the fact that this is going to be. Yeah, early. if it was up to me, Emiliano Martinez starts in goal. That is absolutely undisputed. I don't think Jeremy Mourinho really stands a chance because he has not been very good. Because uh, I'll be honest, I believe personally that Emiliano Martinez has changed the course of this team. Like he has changed the shape of fortune of the team ever since he joined because he gives this aggression, this there's this aura about him when he stands in the goal. He has it in him to challenge the best in the world. Yeah, hundred percent. And he pulled people. off countless outstanding saves in the Copa America. So he is the undisputed starter for Argentina in goal. As far as the right back is concerned, Gonzalo Monti- Montiel is in good form. He is expected to start there. Christian Romero starts as a centre back. He is the best centre back Argentina have right now. He has been exceptional for Tottenham. He has taken to the Premier League like a duck to water. And he's going to be the number one name on the team sheet after Lionel Messi when Argentina are putting down their squad. And the other centre back is Martinez. And the, obviously, Lisandro Martinez. I didn't expect him to do so well when he joined the Premier League, but again, Actually, no one fantastic did. performances for Manchester United, yeah. and there is no reason why you would want to drop him. And as the, the yeah, Nicolas Taliafico as as the left back in the midfield. I expect them to continue with the tried and tested formula. Uh, Leandro yeah. Paredes starts as the defensive midfielder. And there's Rodrigo De Paul, who's going to be the box-to-box midfielder here. And in the wide areas, I'd expect them to go with Angel Di Maria, but he has just returned to training after a long injury. We have to see how he recovers and whether he's ready to start from the get-go. If he doesn't, there's obviously options like Giovanni Lo Celso, and Lo there's Lo Celso plays on the left for Argentina. So no, he 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 has played on the right before, so that is a position he can play. But again, that is a contingency plan if Angel Di Maria is unfit to start from the get-go. And on the left, there's options like again, Lo Celso could be an option on the left. 
there's Angel Correa and Julian Alvarez can play there. He has done that at Manchester City and he has been quite impressive from that position, although he's a striker. So, and, and up the front two. The front two pretty much Martinez fits itself. It's, it's Lautaro Martinez and Lionel Messi for now. Um, so, once again, Dybala sits the World Cup out. That would be quite unfortunate actually because Paolo Dybala has been in better form compared to Martinez this season. After his transfer to Roma, Jose Mourinho has got the best out of him. And it would be quite, quite disappointing if Dybala did not get an opportunity. See, to he will come form. off the bench, he will come off at times. Uh, same will be the case with Julian Alvarez and Angel Correa. Uh, these three will play a part, but they will play a part of the bench. Okay, so this is Argentina's. Uh, yeah, this 11. is pretty much their eleven. Uh, this is these. These are the like you can see. These are the fourteen players that you will see <coughs> featured in the World Cup. Apart from this round, let's just focus on Brazil for a moment because I can't figure out the front three. Gabriel Jesus at the start of the season was a differentiator. Like he was scoring every other game, but he hasn't scored in the last eight games. If I'm not wrong, he's not scored in the last. Gabriel eight Jesus, games. in my opinion, has been has always been a player who is extremely good technique wise, but he has always flatters to receive. The, the finishing product is missing. Absolutely, absolutely. Ever season. since he joined Arsenal, there has been this hype that he has transformed the Gunners and stuff like that. But he is lacking in end product. That is that has always been his problem, and that is the only reason Manchester City chose to part ways with him. Okay. So, uh, so does like Neymar's natural position as the left wing? Yes. But, but but I expect him to start on as the centre forward in the World Cup. Okay. So he starts as the centre forward, so that Vinicius Junior, who is the best player absolutely. at the moment in form, at, at present I'd say Vinicius is one of the best players in the world. So he starts in his national position for Brazil. But again, we are forgetting someone who could be a key option for Brazil on the right, which is Manchester United winger Anthony. Yeah. He has been a good player for Ajax over the past year. He has done relatively well in the Premier League so far. So if Rafinha does not get back to his best, Anthony is always an option. So it will be Vinicius, Neymar and Anthony. So like there is a lot of discussion around Brazil that we can do some other day because this is about Argentina and the fact that we are discussing numerous possible options for Brazil suggests that the 11 is not settled. When it comes to Argentina, they have a settled 11, the tropical conditions will uh, suit them better and they have a better squad, a better chemistry. Off late, the team has been good. Messi has revived himself and that is why we believe that this is going to be Messi's year because he is going to finally lift the World Cup.